Hey, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? I don't know you. It's Bill Burr. It's time for the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, February 19th. 2018. Oh my God, two months are almost over. Uh, this year is just flying by. It is if you live out here, you know. You live out here in Los Angeles. It's fucking awesome. As opposed... Just give us the keys. As opposed to living back east, where I guess it's really fucking cold, which is where I'm about ready to go. I'm about ready to go to... Uh, Becky's, because we're doing the sixth annual Patrice O'Neill Comedy Benefit. All right? Raising money and raising awareness for the greatest comedian that I ever saw live. Um, the sixth annual. It's going to be a great one. I can't wait. I fly out tomorrow. I'm already packed. I got my fucking ticket. You know, I got a nice midday flight. Um gonna have a good time and then i'm gonna uh i'm gonna do a late night set of some shit at the west side comedy club shake a little bit of the rust off and go on and try not to embarrass myself um with the level of talent that we have going on there of course and you know who uh, with an added addition this year the teen idol sensation from the late great opie and anthony show mr joe de rosa joe de rosa Half Egyptian, 100% cunt. Can't wait to see him. Um, so anyway, so I'm doing this. I'm doing this podcast uh, in the afternoon. I hung out with my uh, my family all weekend. I had a great time, except for the big fight I had with my wife. Other than that, it was a great time. You know what I mean? Uh, and I, I made a. I, I you know what? It was Ash Wednesday the other day, and I went to church for the first time in a long time just to see the band. They had that Dixieland band. I don't know why they don't have that every week. You know what I mean? I would go every week if they were in the back. They do that as opposed to coming in with that haunting fucking organ. My fucking died for you, ba 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 boo boo. Ya da da di da 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 ba da boo. Right? All that shit, you know. The original. The original support the troops, first responders, the original guilt trip, the Catholic religion. (laughs) If Jesus was alive today, can you imagine the standing ovation he would get as he walked through the fucking airport? If people weren't staring at their phones, if they saw him. You know what I mean? Anyways. Plowing ahead. Uh, So it's Ash Wednesday, and I've given up arguing with my wife for Lent. I'm just not going to do it. I'm just going to experiment just completely. Just I'm just going to fucking, I'm just going to agree with everything. Hey, hey, you want to do this horrific time eater that you'll you'll, you'll experience absolute no joy in? Uh, Yeah, absolutely, honey. That sounds great. You know, I've already been doing it. It's weirding her out. You know, because we, we went to the mall today, right? Who the fuck goes to the mall on a Sunday? Guess what? This guy. Because I'm not arguing with my wife anymore. Let's go. Go to the mall. Fucking absolutely. Let's go when everybody else has the day off to go. Right? So we go down there. It's, I mean, it was like it was Christmas. There was so many fucking people down. Or, or the weeks leading up to Christmas, I should say. Just a zillion. Still a good time, right? Don't get me wrong. I love my wife. I love my kid. I love my role as 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 being a father. But Jesus fucking Christ. You know what I mean? It just gets to the point, man. There's just too many fucking people. I start getting, like, claustrophobic. So, um, we go down to this place, right? We're fucking hanging out and everything. And I'm just looking around. I'm actually glad I went. Because I haven't been to a gathering of people in a long time. I mean... I know people come out to my shows, but the lights are in my eyes, so I can't see you. And uh, I cannot fucking believe the influence of social media on just people walking around. It was, it was, it was a shit show. I have never seen so much side boob, underneath boob, on top boob. My wife's going, will you stop staring at all these titties? It's just like, how? 
They're fucking out. Everybody looked like they were trying to do, you know, the, 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 the was dress like they were going to a photo shoot to get their fucking whatever your, your, your main picture on Instagram. All the guys GQ'd up or looking like J. Crew douches. I saw this one work woman walking by and it was just like she looked like she was on her way to the club and she was pushing a baby. And I, I accidentally in front of me, I just go, that's not a mom. <laughs> Moms don't look like that. So Nia's looking at me, she goes, why not? That's what I want to look like. I want to I be the hot mom. What's wrong with that? And I was just like, well, I gave it up for Lent. I was like, uh, nothing. Nothing. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And she goes, no, no, I, I want to hear what you're thinking. I said, no, well, you know, I gave up arguing with you for uh, Lent. So, I, you know, I was, she goes, Did we don't have to argue. You could just tell me what you're thinking. So right off the bat, I'm loving this new power that I have that I'm not going to argue with her. And then, you know, because I'm not arguing with her, she's not going to know what I'm thinking. Right. And that's freaking her out. And all I want to say is, hey, welcome to my fucking world. I never know what you're thinking. Guys, I'm telling you right now, it's not too late. It's not too late. Give up arguing with your woman for Lent. And this is the big, tell them that that's what you're doing. I'm not going to argue with you. And they're all excited. They think it's going to be great. But then is you, you're, you're like taking away one of their major powers, which is their ability to piss you off. And then you spill the beans. You know, they get you all fucking mad and be like, all right, all right, I was an hour late because I had another drink with my friends. You know what? Because I don't fucking break my balls like you do. And then she can be like, oh, so you went out like me. All that shit, right? So if you just sit there, you just sit in the fucking pocket. Like, what was that movie uh, John Turturro did? He played that mobster and he just did that great thing where he just was sitting there, and, like barely audible in front of the, the whatever, some fucking Senate committee. Going, I can't answer that on the grounds of my uh, incriminate myself. I can't answer that on the grounds of my incriminate myself. I can't answer that on the grounds of my incriminate myself. He says it like over and over with this gravelly fucking voice. That is so fucking unbelievable. Right there, they should have just given him an award. Just him saying that line over and over again was better than 90% of the fucking acting that I see, right? So, anyways, she's trying to get me to fucking say why, you know... A woman shouldn't be like fucking high heels with her ass fucking jacked up in the air and her tits hanging out. You know, makeup all done, hair all done, all of that shit, pushing around a kid. Now, you know, there really is no reason why she can't be like that. Uh, I just selfishly was just sitting there like, I wouldn't want my mom to look like that. Because then all my friends would want to fuck my mom. You know? <laughs> So much of what I think makes sense until I say it out loud and then I realize how fucking stupid I am. But um, it was, I mean, granted, I, I was in L.A. We went right to the fucking, the Grove here in Hollywood where it's just like, you know, it, I, there was some of the best looking fucking 50, 40, 50 and 60 year old people I've ever seen in my life. And then you had the, the young people. Jesus Christ, it was All-Star Weekend. You thought all the whores were down at the Staples Center and the fucking hotels in the surrounding area. No, they were over at the Grove, the regular ones. Everybody there looked like they were trying to fuck an NBA All-Star and none of them worked. They were just shopping. And I caught myself in a mirror and I was just like, wow, man. I literally looked like I came here in a fucking time machine. I had my old Archie Bunker hat on. And everybody keeps breaking my balls because I made fun of Rogan's hat that one time when he said he had a little rascal's haircut on, ha hat on, I was going to say. I love that hat. I just gave him shit because I thought he was going to come at me. It was just a comedian thing. Make fun of his fucking hat. He'll be self-conscious. He can't see it. It's on top of his head. It's going to fuck with him. And then I won't have to deal with Joe Rogan unleashing his genius on my big bald head, right? That's the only reason why. Other than that, I like the hat. So um, I got a couple of those. I got a little pork pie hat, you know? I got my own little fucking Mr. White from fucking Breaking Bad going on. You shave your head as a white dude. I mean, you got to cover it up, especially if you're a fucking ginger. All right? I'm not trying to spontaneously combust. I live in a desert out here. I got to keep the sun off me. Um, anyways, I need to, like, paint the top of my, you know, paint the top of my head. Like, you know, in World War II, how they would paint the headlights. They'd just be like a little slit there. I should paint the entire, my whole fucking head and just have a slit right near my eyes. <laughs> So I don't blind anybody trying to land at LAX 
Um, but there was a lie in the, in the middle of all of that Instagram shit show, which who's kidding who? Most of this is just me dealing with the fact that things are changing and nobody cares about my views, which is, is part of becoming old. They just sit now. Like, hey, hey, there used to be a shop where you could buy peanuts, right? Nobody cares. Nobody cares, old man. You had your time. It's fucking over, right? So I'm just kind of getting to that realization that I am that guy. I've probably been that guy for 15 years, but I'm just, you know, my fucking, I don't know. I'm so full of myself, I finally just realized it. So, uh, I don't know. That's something I, I mean, man, I, I, man, I must have looked like a creep. I must have looked like a creep. I'm 49 years old, okay? And I like to think I try to be a gentleman, you know? Jesus, I try, Okay. But here's the thing. If you're going to walk by with your fucking titties out, I mean, what what am I supposed to do? That's my new fucking, uh, you know, when I get a text, Wah! like some gumshoe shit. It drives me nuts, and I love it. I'm fucking winning, man. I'm not arguing with her. It's driving her nuts in a little way, you know? Because she's like, well, we don't have to argue, but I still like debating. So I said, what's going on with you? Um, as always, my wife doesn't talk like that. That's just how I hear it in my head. Um, so anyways, we went over there and uh, I went into the Nike store and they, they actually have the balls. They're selling T-shirts that say equality. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking like, isn't this the people? Was it them or Apple that had the sweatshop where people would jump into their deaths? I can't remember. But then I looked it up, and it says that Nike has made big strides, no pun intended, in their fucking uh, sweatshop environment. Which, I mean, I mean, what, what, do you, what do you have to fucking do? You know, give one person a sandwich, and then you get a higher rating than last quarter? I don't know. Top ten ways to improve a sweatshop. Number one, uh, buy a fly swatter. One fly swatter for all 10,000 employees. Uh, number two. What else could you do? Um, have a door. Well, people can go home at some point. Um, a working bathroom. I don't know. I don't know. They're all fucking... Why, why do they have... You know what I mean? It's so fucking dumb. When I was a kid, they made shirts in this country, and it didn't cost you a zillion dollars. But now they're just like, you want me to in this country? Gonna cost you anything? Because they, it's not because it costs so fucking much to make a shirt. It's because they, they're they not going to drop their profits. So it's like, all right, if we can't pay this guy 30 cents an hour, we got to pay it an American fucking 10 bucks an hour then you're going to eat the cost in the shirt, okay? Because I'm not having a smaller yacht. You got that, fucko? And by the way, I gave to the president's campaign. You didn't. So what I say goes. That's how I think it, that's how I think it works. Without ever having researched how much it costs to make a shirt. That's how I formulate my opinions. You know, I look at a couple things, then I get paranoid. And then I just start running my freckled fucking yap. And for whatever reason, enough people listen to this podcast that I continue doing it twice a week. All right. Do you ever think about that as you sit in your cubicle, giggling and laughing to yourself that you're just enabling, you're just enabling the, 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 the disease of a sick man, man. I don't know I'm sick. I don't, I don't know what the fuck I am. All I know was the titties were out at the fucking mall, and I was walking around looking like a skinny Archie, Bunk Archie Bunker, and I, I don't give a fuck, you know? My wife goes, well, don't, don't be fucking, dude, this one girl walked by, right? Giant ass, giant round fucking ass, and she was, I think she bought salamis from the White Shadow, salami short shorts, off of the white shadow And that's what the fuck she had on Her fucking ass was out I was like, Mia, look at that Turn around, look at that She goes, look at what? She turned around, she goes Jesus Christ Yeah Guys, you gotta stick around and raise your daughters Okay? I'll tell you right now If that woman That barely a woman Wearing those fucking shorts 
If her dad stuck around for her entire childhood, I swear to God, I'll have a gun in my mouth. If you can be a good dad and your daughter still goes to the mall with half her fucking ass hanging out. I don't know. Maybe that's this is this part of the fucking uh, the Me Too thing. The empowerment of women. If a woman wants to walk around with all of her ass hanging out, that's her fucking chance. You know that stupid shit now where it's like basically women can now do whatever the fuck they want without consequence. You know, ignoring the number one fucking rule of nature, which is you have the way you wish the world is and the way the world really is. And you have to act accordingly. You could walk around with your ass hanging out. I wouldn't do it. That's not something I would do. But, you know, it is your ass. And if you want to have it out. Remember that George Carlin book bit that he did? He goes, you ever noticed 90% of women who are, who are uh, against abortion you wouldn't want to fuck in the first place? It's one of my favorite fights. That's just fucking hilarious, you know? That's a lot of times when you sit there and you know, women are bitching about being catcalled. Some of the fucking women who fucking complain about that shit, you're just looking at them going, are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? I, I swear to God, you walk by a construction site, the only thing you can hear is the sound of people hammering nails. You know, if you're fucking high horse. You know, or maybe that's because I'm not exactly a good looking person and I don't have sympathy for people who get like a standing ovation when they walk by a fucking job site. Am I really supposed to feel bad for you? <laughs> I understand. It's scary. I always looked at it like, you know, like whenever as a guy you watch like the beginning of Shawshank Redemption and everyone's chanting fresh fish. That's must be what like, you know, a certain, you know, level of good looking woman feels like when she walks by a construction site. However, in 2018, all women seem to be acting like they're that good looking. And the reality is you're not. Okay. Which brings me to Olympic figure skating. All right. If I hear one more fucking figure skater talking about how they had to starve themselves because they want the right body type to fucking twirl around in the fucking ice. I mean, am I really supposed to feel bad for you? Okay, you, you, you're, you've entered a fucking beauty contest. All right? I swear to God, it'd be like, you know, listen to some of these people complain. It's like me bitching that I, I can't book a shampoo commercial. Or how come I can't be the spokesperson for copper tone tanning? Because you're a bald, pasty, freckled cunt that no one wants to look at. We're in business here. We're trying to make money. Right? That's why I don't... I that, that fucking... Uh, what, what the fuck is it? You know, I love that I don't even know her name. Oh, no. Tanya Hardy. I guess I don't know the other one's name. Nancy Kerrigan. I know them both. You know what I mean? That was just all about a little fucking runt of the litter chick. All right? Who, who should have been like a power lifter or something. And she decided that she was going to figure skate. I mean, they have figure right in the fucking job. You got to be all long and fucking sinewy. Everybody knows that. I don't, I don't fucking get it. I have, you got to like fucking, you got to like dumb it down. There's a lot of weird shit going on right now. I heard Sports Illustrated use nothing but women photographers this year as some sort of sign of strength with women. It's just like, well, wait a minute. So all those guys who you used to hire, did any of them get busted for doing anything wrong? Or did they just all get kicked to the curb? I'm not buying any of this either. Now everybody has to, like, do something. This is like the vagina version of, like, the fucking ice bucket challenge. It's like, why can't I just give you money? Why do I gotta, like, dump shit over my fucking head? What's the cause? Is it worthy? Is the money actually going to the victims? Fine, I'll give it to them. These stupid shows of strength. I don't know. God, I'm in a fucking mood. So Friday night, me and my wife went down to go see Black Panther. All right. And uh, I enjoyed the movie. Mia loved the movie. I enjoyed it. Uh, but, you know, I had a little sippy sip before I went in there. And then uh, I had two hits of weed. And it's just the weed that they make nowadays. It's just, you know, I'm trying not to drink. I don't want the calories. Right. So I had a couple hits of weed. I was just I was like tripping. So I'm sitting in that fucking movie, right? And you know, it's a fucking superhero movie, right? And everybody's just like, there's always this big drama with your family and all of that shit. 
And at one point I fell asleep. Nothing because of the movie. It was because I was fucking flying. And I fell asleep for I don't know how long. And uh, all of a sudden, something big and metal got thrown or crashed. And it hit the ground. It was like, it was like scraping and shit. And in my brain, I was flying a helicopter and my skids hit the fucking runway when I was trying to taxi. And I thought I was going to flip the fucking thing. And dude, I tell you, I fucking jumped. I fucking like <laughs> woke myself up. And Nia's looking at me like, Jesus Christ, it wasn't that scary. Um, but anyways... Uh, Nia's going to go back and she's going to go see the one where you put the glasses on and it's this whole other level. And I, I can't handle that shit. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't want somebody's fucking hand in my face and those women with the fucking the spears there. I, I don't, I, you know, it's enough for me. It's, it's fucking unreal that people needed to jump off the screen. It's like, this isn't incredible enough. I don't want to ruin the move. There's one fight scene, you know. Between a couple of fans, it's always family members. There's always some shit going on. You know what I mean? Um, somebody's dad did something, or somebody's pissed at their sister, or they didn't realize. You know? Oh, hey, I didn't even know you were my cousin. Oh, fuck! Let's join forces and go fucking try to take the mountain and get the glowing thing and put it back in its rightful place so everybody can live in peace. It's basically the blue- blueprint of them all, right? Um, my beef with superhero movies is like after they made made up like six of them, kind of like all the really good ideas were gone. It's like the dunking contest. There's only so many ways to fucking dunk it. And the next thing you know, you know, they're bringing out, you know, some guy like Staples is sitting at a desk. Right. And somebody's got to fucking jump over him. Use the stapler as like a fucking springboard or something. It's just at that point, you're just like, dude, you're out of ideas. OK, we, we've exhausted what human beings can do. Let's wait till nerds continue to, to develop these fucking robots and let's see what they can do. Right? No? You don't think so? I don't know. What do you guys think of those when you go to an NBA game and those people come out with the trampoline and they're all flipping around and fucking slamming the ball and everything? That was like interesting for like two weeks and then I just started realizing that most of them were white and I just started feeling bad about myself going, Jesus Christ, we can't even do what black people do unless we have like a fucking trampoline. <laughs> and I hate whatever form of entertainment that is, that fucking excitement that they're trying to pass on to you. I'm just too much of a jaded cunt. You know, when they fucking have their eyebrows up, you know, and they're fucking nodding as they come out. You know, like all of a sudden we're all in band camp or something. Oh, God, why am I such a cunt? Why can't I just sit and fucking enjoy things? I try. I don't try. This is just naturally who the fuck I am. You know what I mean? Um, anyways. So Saturday night, I had a great weekend. Saturday night, I went to the fucking, uh, I went to Queens of the Stone Age at L.A. Forum. With royal blood opening up. Jesus Christ. What a fucking show. You have to go see it. You gotta go see it. It's been, I've been here, nothing but great things um, on this, about this tour coming up. So I was really excited. And every fucking time those, that band was in town, I've been out of town every fucking time. They played the Wiltern. I was out of town. Where the hell did they, then they played, uh, then their next album came out. And I think they had Staples. I don't know where they were at. Not this album, the album before. And I forget where I, I wasn't in town, so I missed that one. And uh, then I thought I was going to miss this one. And then the last second, you know, my daughter got sick. So uh, I kind of pushed back my trip to New York. And um, I was able to go down and see the... Holy shit, were they fucking good. It was ridiculous. Um, and John Theodore has his, like this fucking red Vista light kit now. That just sounded... Incredible! And two times he took a drum solo. I don't want to ruin the show if they do the same thing every night. I, I, they don't strike me as that kind of band, but like, and it just it was just it was fucking unreal. It was just unreal. And that bass player was a bad, total fucking rock star. And then I got to see Royal Blood too, uh, who I'm a big fan of. And uh, me and Del Rey got there. Got there a little bit late, but we caught like half of their set. It was just two fucking people, bass player and drums, killing it. Everybody going nuts, and um, I always love seeing shows at the, uh, the the 
the forum too because I can't believe like how small that place is compared to like the Staples Center which is like gigantic and I probably the forum holds just as many people there's just not so many bells and whistles in there and every time I go in there I just look down where the floor used to be being like this is where Magic Worthy Kareem that's where Mikhail somewhere on one of these corners clothesline Kurt Rambis um this is where the uh, the fucking 76ers came in and kicked the shit out of the Lakers in 83. This is where that Piston team beat the Lakers, I think. Like, so many. I mean, the Lakers were basically in the finals almost every year. They were in, in the finals in 80, 82, 83, 84, 85. I might be wrong about that. 86, they missed it. 87 and 88. So what is that? That was like seven out of eight. It was either six out of eight years or seven out of eight years. They were in the finals every fucking year. So I just think of all the wars that I saw on that court. And um, and I actually saw the Lakers and the L.A. Kings play there back in the 90s. I saw the Kings when they played uh, the Penguins against Mario Lemieux. And then I saw a young, young, young Kobe Bryant when he was still wearing number eight. Del Harris was the coach, and I think Dennis Rodman was on that team, and Shaq had just got there. Hey, ladies. Hi. Hey, you want to talk about that, you know, all of the Instagram people I saw at the mall? <laughs> I didn't tell you, I was so friggin' claustrophobic with the, how many people there. That was bananas, right? Yeah. But I was telling the listeners that for Lent, I gave up arguing with you. Oh, is that what that's about? Huh? It's Lent? Well, it doesn't have to be Lent, but why not? Isn't it 40 days? 40 days. I'm not going to argue with you. So right now, if you want it, you know. If you want it, you can get it. No, any, <laughs> any, of any like, shit that you know that, oops, any stuff. Sorry, sweetheart. Sorry. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> My daughter got her ears pierced. I was so against it. Oh, but she looks so cute. Yeah, she does. I know, but she's just like, why, why, I would. I was wondering, oh, you want to see something cute? Watch her put on my little pork pie hat. This is the most action. adorable thing ever. Watch this. Oh, huh? you going to start crooning oh, for us? You. <laughs> in the night. You like Daddy's Isn't that a Barbara Streisand song? Or did he, oh, oh, he sang that too. Then he scat sang in the end. She's kissing the microphone. <laughs> doobie, doobie, doo. There were, hey, yes, don't crush what, my hat. What was your problem with hot moms at the mall? What's wrong with that? Uh, I don't have a problem with it. You're right. Okay, so this is no, <laughs> this is a no arguing. I don't know what to, I don't know what it was. It was boring podcast. If you're not gonna, I know. Gonna I just on. I wonder. I guess I guess you know is what you were saying. I was just wondering like how committed like are you? It just seems really self involved. Like like I mean I can't get a tan, but let's say I could get a tan. Right. All right. Oh, you almost fell there, kiddo. So, like, say, like, I'm a dad, and I'm walking around. I got a P90X body all tanned up. I got my teeth all... Uh, all white? Yeah, all whitened. But you should, Hair though. plugs and all that. Oh, I... Face all yanked back. Let me, let me just say, okay? Okay. And I'm walking around. Now, how much do you think I'm, I'm paying attention to my kids? Listen, I think the better you feel about yourself, the better you are as a parent. Thank you. That was like... Oh, that would have crushed on Oprah. Um, oh, she's clapping too. You clapping for mommy? Because I'm right. <laughs> you clapping for mommy? Yay! Yay! I love how her instinct is to take the microphone. This is this is definitely. Your oh yeah, child. she's a ham. Um, she's a ham. But no, I think that's it's it's fine. I mean, obviously, it is. It if is. You're, if it you're is putting fine. on. Oh, did I? I didn't stop the recorder, did I? Uh, no. Obviously, if you are choosing to, like, you know, do your makeup Could you or please talk into the mic? Do I'm you? watching her. She's okay. good. Hi. Hi. Um, <laughs> if you're like, you know, I would play with my child for five more minutes, but I have to do my... I don't know. I don't like to judge people, but I think it's cool that you can, like, have yourself together and look amazing and still go out with the kid and, like, do your thing. I think that's great. Do you realize that if I didn't judge people, we'd both be homeless? <laughs> <laughs> that's all I do. Um, what are you talking about? I told them how I, I, I passed out 
in uh, <laughs> Black Panther, and I thought I was in a helicopter crash. You did pass out, but to be fair, you started boozing before we went. I had one glass. It was a big glass. Though. It's a big boy glass. It's a oh, you a big boy? Yeah, you got your big boy glass. Yeah, it's Could a have home. a little sippy before the movie. Oh, it was a home big pour. boy. Yeah. Anyway, you had a big <laughs> uh, you had a big glass, and then you know we did the other thing. So I'll tell you right you now, were, on, no, you were, on that thing, I you was were pretty faded. <laughs> no, I wasn't even buzzed off of that. <laughs> you were walking down the street. You were that was because so you had that psycho weed. I always forget to just take a hit and a half. I don't have psycho weed. Well, my, I'm, I'm not a, a weed. lightweight. Yeah, I am. Yeah. I am. And I went in there, and all of a sudden, this is my brother. And I was just tripping. Yeah. And then I passed out, and that, that spaceship or something crashed. <laughs> Did you feel it when I jumped? <laughs> <laughs> Um, Too bad you passed out because it was a really good movie. I thought it was a what, what I remember. what you saw. What I saw, really I, I really enjoyed. The acting was great. <laughs> I like the it evil brother. I'm going to see it. The at, evil brother and the evil white dude were great. So I like the evil brother too. Actually, yeah. I feel like I don't want to spoil it for those who. Yeah, have let's seen stop it. talking about it. All right. I guess it only just came out, but um, I'm going to go see it again tomorrow huh? in 4DX. Have you ever heard of this? What are they going to do? They're going to It's like a universal ride where the seats move and maybe they miss spray you with the garden hose. Yeah, I don't really feel like it's necessary for all that, so I'm glad we saw the regular <laughs> Look at this child. I'm just, I'm glad we saw the regular version cuz so I could really concentrate on the story. Okay. So what are they going to do? They're going to like throw stuff at you? I I have no idea. We'll see. It's like Gallagher needs to go into the movies. Oh, God, I hope not. <laughs> um, Gallagher's got great material, though. And nobody understood that. I'm telling you, that, that Sledgematic was ironic. He was making fun of advertising, and then everybody took it at face value. Like, oh, I hope he takes a big thing of cottage cheese, and I get hit in the face with it. Yeah. They didn't get it. What's this? Um, what are you giving me? Um, anyways, Thank you. let me do. I got to read a little bit of the uh, the advertising. Here. All right. Well, we came in to say. Oh, to say good night. Yeah, to say good Sleep night. Sleep tight and pleasant dreams to you. Layers of wish and a prayer. What song was that? What's your favorite? I was in the Lawrence Walk show. Come true and I'll do It's how white a guy I am, Neil, that you married. <laughs> Adios, au revoir, avido Good night. And then they'd come in with the, that? the end of the Lawrence Welk show. Is he the guy that Fred Armisen That was basically kind of... our soul train. Black people stole Ooh, soul train from... That was your soul train? Lawrence Welk, yeah. <laughs> sounds like... And now, Bobby like, and Susie, we're going like to... your nap time. hey because it was boring. Is that the... Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, is that the guy that Fred Armisen would make fun of, like, do imitation of on, um, on SNL? And then, like, Kristen uh, Wiig would come out as the, like, weird woman with, like, the little hands. It might... No. I don't... There was nobody with little hands on Lawrence Welk. No, I know. But I'm just saying... I don't know. I don't know what Lawrence Welk is. That definitely sounds like some white shit. Um, cool. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Huh? You all excited you're walking around? <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you? What's so funny? She just cracks up to herself like all day long. I know. She's I want to like, be like, what do you think? What is out of place in the universe that just struck you as funny? Remember when she was like super, super little? She'd just be crawling along and then she'd just stop and just go, kee, 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 kee. like she just has her own little yeah. secret thing going on. It's She's so got cute. It. She has an imagination. All right. Let me, uh, I got to read some uh, wait, 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 advertising. Wait, wait. No, 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 no. She's going to touch no, the no, mixer. Yeah. Okay. Hey, beautiful. Can you say bye bye? I'll see you. Uh, I won't see you anymore because I, I know. Huh? Kiss. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, honey. Can you say bye bye? Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> and a kiss for all the listeners. All right. Bye bye. Oh, I have bye to bye. sing the Miyandi song, and she can't be in here for this. Okay. Hi, Daddy is uh, mm -hmm. an idiot. And he makes money okay. saying filthy things. All right. All right, see you later. Bye. Bye. All right, come on. These people are getting bored, Neil. Okay.
You're getting bored. Hey, 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 hey. Well, that's your new thing, the scowl. Somebody tells you not to do something. You start looking at me like, what, what kind of authority do you have? She looks at you like you look. I know. The only time anybody says my daughter looks like me is when she's in a bad mood and she gives somebody a look. Oh, she does look like Bill. No. Uh, yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Okay. There we go. Oh, look who it is, everybody. Me undies. Oh, ba do 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 Me undies. Me undies. Mom is dressing like a whore. ba do 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 Me undies. Me undies. It hits her on the floor. So she goes to a doctor, gets him perked up, takes some ass fad, sticks it in her lips. Now she's dating somebody two grades below me. Um, me undies, everybody. Sorry. You want to look good in your underwear and be comfortable. But that perfect balance is hard to find. Don't sacrifice style or comfort. Check out MeUndies.com and find the best pair of underwear in the world. Talk about why MeUndies is the best underwear you will ever own. Feel free to improvise. Well, I have a pair. And I have to tell you, uh, they feel nice on my balls. It's weird. It's like, am I wearing underwear? Huh? Oh, yeah. Yes, I am. Uh, it's like the Wonder Woman jet on your balls, except it's underwear. MeUndies will be the most comfortable pair of underwear you will ever own. Made from sustainably sourced, naturally soft fabric. Fucking computer screen. Come on. Uh, that is three times softer than cotton. Ultimate feel-good undies for when you want to feel naked, not be naked. 100% satisfaction guarantee. They guarantee you will love your undies or your money back. Speaking of underwear, the worst fucking underwear commercial is that one where they have, like, the construction worker. They're like, no pinch, no no stench. It's like, Jesus Christ. This guy with his bulldozer nuts. I don't need to hear about that. Right now, MeUndies has an, an exclusive offer just for my listeners. Get 20% off your first pair and free shipping. And MeUndies is so sure you will love their underwear. They even offer a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Your order, a, you order a pair. You order a pair, motherfucker. And you don't love, if you don't love your first pair, you get a full refund. This is a no-brainer to try. 20% off, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee. What in God's name are you waiting for? To get you 20% off, free shipping, and their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and get the best and softest underwear you will ever own, go to MeUndies.com slash bird. That's MeUndies.com slash bird. This is a limited-time offer, so what in the fuck are you waiting for? Start wearing your best underwear of your life. It changed my life, evidently, according to the copy. It's time to let MeUndies change yours. Go to MeUndies.com slash burr right now you know i shouldn't have said those things about figure skaters you know um i you know i'm just sick of listening to people fucking bitching you know about body image and all of that shit can we at least agree that there are people better looking than other people (laughs) um i don't know maybe i'm a realist i know i'm i know i'm riding the bench in the look department (laughs) I'm like that hack they put in at the end of an NBA game and fucking people go nuts if I just get a fucking bucket or hit a foul shot, you know, because the home team's up by 30. Uh, Dollar Shave Club, everybody. Dollar Shave Club delivers to you everything you need to look, smell, and feel your best. Shampoo, body wash, toothpaste, and of course, the best razors that you will ever use. Get an amazing, high-quality shave every morning from Dollar Shave Club's executive razor. But the true hero of any morning routine is their Dr. Carver's Shave Butter. Easy shave butter. Some of those thickies you want to figure skate. I think they put it between their thighs when they get out there. And they end up being too powerful for the old white judges. That's not what a, what a, what a, that's not what beauty looks like. It looks like me. It looks like me. Uh, it helps the razor gently glide across your skin. Uh, you have to experience it. Another must-have experience is how Dollar Shave Club delivers everything to you. Speaking of which, I really liked fucking Mary Lou Retton back in the day. I thought she had a nice body. My mother was telling me, I think she's a little too, she's a little too powerful looking. Uh, that means no more trips to the store wandering, wandering the aisles hunting for razors, shampoo, toothpaste, but uh, then having to p- play at being a cashier, scanning and bagging your own stuff. Well, God knows I fucking hate that. For a mind-blowing experience, 
Join Dollar Shave Club today. All right, take it down, Dollar Shave Club. All right, it's fucking convenient. It's not going to blow your mind. I can't believe I ordered so many came to my house. It's like everything on the internet. Um, whatever, they're saying it's going to be mind-blowing. They must have some fucking ass shaver or something that they throw in as a free thing. And for just $5 with free shipping, you'll get the six-bladed executive razor plus trial sizes of shave butter, body cleanser, and one light, one white Charlie. Then keep the blades coming for a few bucks a month. Get yours at dollarshaveclub.com. Wait, dollarshaveclub.com slash burr. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash burr. You know what I saw today that was fucking, no, two days ago was fucking hilarious. Um... This woman in like a, either a, a Fiat 500 or a fucking, uh, uh, what are those cars? Those British cars. A Mini Cooper. Smashed into a pole and like literally knocked her front fucking tire off. And there was no other person involved in the accident. And uh, it reminded me of that old game that I used to play called Old Erasian. Uh, Stamps.com, because there was nobody else around this person. They must have been on the phone. Stamps.com is the easiest way to, to across, no, to access. I got to get classes. Stamps.com is the easiest way to access all the amazing services of the post office. Print postage for any mail class right from your own computer. The exact amount of postage every time. Never underpay or overpay again. I'm going to use my soothing voice in this. Stamps.com saves you time and money which you can use to grow your business. I can mail any letter or any package using just my computer and printer and the mailman comes and picks it up. It's actually a woman, the male woman. Can we say male person? Are you ashamed of being called a woman? Stamps.com brings all the amazing services of the post office right to your fingertips. Buy and print official US postage for any letter, any package, any class of mail, using your own computer and printer. They'll send you a digital scale automatically. Yeah, it automatically calculates the exact postage. Stamps.com will even help you decide the best class of mail based on your needs. I use Stamps.com whenever I send out my posters if I'm going to whore myself out at the end of my fucking shows. Uh, I'm a moron. If I can figure out how to do it, then so can you. And right now, you too can enjoy the Stamps.com service with a special offer. That includes a four-week trial plus postage and a digital scale. Go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in, in Burr. That's Stamps.com. Enter Burr. You know what? Now I feel bad that I made fun of figure skaters because I remember seeing this African-American woman. And she was out there killing it, doing backflips and shit. And they couldn't deal with how fucking strong she was. And they're like, that's not what a woman looks like. So I felt bad for her. I guess I just don't feel bad for Tanya Hardy. You know what I mean? And I don't buy that she didn't know it. You know what I mean? If somebody's going to go out of their way, one of those guys who's going to go out of their way to smash somebody's knee so you would win, they're going to let you know because they're obviously trying to fuck you, right? That would have been my argument if I was a prosecution. What kind of guy goes out and breaks the knee of another woman for another woman without telling her? I mean, he's a guy, all right? He's a heterosexual guy. I mean, it's somewhere there has to be a blowjob at the end of the rainbow, or he's not getting out of bed in the morning. No further questions. All right, gun control, everybody. Oh, JJ's. I stepped into it with this one. I'm trying to see if we can just, somebody can just explain to me. Uh... I'm open-minded about it because I don't know shit about guns. Why you need an AR-15 to fucking defend your house? Do people break into your house in packs of 40? That's all I'm asking. Or is it is it better in a tight spot? You know, my big thing with any gun is how loud is it? You know? How loud is it? Because I don't know if my ears are already fucked up, you know what I mean? I can't even use a cap gun. Um, I think I'm going to go with just like bear mace. Yeah. All right. Gun control. I love that you spray mace and then the guy's still coming at you. And then you got to run through the cloud that you just fucking sprayed. Now you both fucking can't see shit. All right. Gun control. Here we go. Billy Red Balls of Fire. Uh, huge fan and love your work. Much respect and enjoy your success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a lifetime NRA member and I believe in the Second Amendment. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. We get it. 
I'm a Metallica fan and I like to rock. Can we not be so fucking redundant? Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, but but being that it is an amendment, we could change it to correct it for today's of everyday events and happenings. All right, these school shootings could be narrowed down if we would do away with assault rifles. Now, I know there's a lot of gun people right now going, this isn't a real gun person. This is somebody, some liberal fucking hippie. He glued a bear to his face. He rented a bass boat, and then he sanded this in, trying to act like he speaks for me. He does not. All right, these school shootings could be narrowed down if we would do away with assault rifles. Yes, there would still be violence in schools, but a 20 or 12 gauge shotgun is a lot harder to hide than a 9 millimeter Glock. I also have a good idea. Right now, you can go to a, to a Bass Pro Shop, Walmart, and half a dozen other stores to buy ammo. Since here in New York, we have to register our guns annually, we could also make a state-run ammo-only store. State-run, okay, a state-run ammo-only store, kind of like Canada's beer liquor store. Buy your guns wherever, register them with the state annually, and buy your ammo through the state. That way, any large or odd ammo purchases would be tracked. Along with your background check, it's really the best idea I can come up with. As always, hello to the lovely Nia, and thank you for putting up with his ginger ass. And Bill, go fuck yourself. That's hilarious. Um, all right, so there's some ideas. There's some ideas. Uh, all right, is okay. Mass shooting proposals. Hey there, williest of bills. Um, Here's my proposal to reduce mass shootings. Get communities to come together. It seems like a simple idea, but here's my logic. How many people interact with or even know their neighbors? My parents divorced when I was four years old, and during my alternating custody, I noticed a few major differences in their individual happiness. And one of the minor minor details, period, was my mother always made it a point to say hi to her neighbors and hand out cards on the holidays, where my father avoided neighbors at all costs. That sounds like me. And also was talking shit and saying negative things. Also sounds like me. As an adult, I don't dole out gifts, but I do make it a point to say hi and shoot the shit with all my neighbors. I believe if communities regularly interacted or even held monthly or seasonal events like block parties, they could build a trust and dependence for each other. And if you notice a neighbor kid acting shady it could be noted and the kid could get the help they needed without feeling disconnected and abandoned as i said it's a simple solution as much as i'm a simple man may one or more gods or fewer bless you and your family and go fuck yourself p.s i was raised around people of the lds faith mormons and i see these interactions between them regularly anecdotal evidence or not it's an idea all right Okay, uh, gun response. I just want to hear what people have to say. I usually comment on this shit. I just haven't really, I don't, because I don't know shit about this. I guess that's what it is. No one has been able to tell me why you need. Yeah, I just wish a gun owner would be fucking honest when it comes to assault rifles. Why do you want an assault? Why, what do you need an assault rifle for? And it's like, I don't need one. It's just fucking awesome. To just go down to the gun range and go, yeah, that, 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 right? And just fucking have a good time with it. It's like, who needs a fucking Ferrari? Nobody. Right? Nobody needs a fucking Ferrari. All you need is a goddamn, you need a fucking a Prius to get to work. But who doesn't want a Ferrari? They're awesome. But in the wrong hands. All right. Gun response. Billy banned bullets. I never said to ban bullets. Love the podcast. Like that you're a very humble guy. I'm completely full of myself, sir. Doing stand-up at night is not enough. I have to still have a microphone in my hands, even in my house. Um, okay, I love. I grew up in South Alabama, and I'm just getting out of the Marine Corps officer training. Stereotypically, I'm a conservative with a moderate knowledge of guns. So to answer your question, the Second Amendment is to protect yourself and others from tyranny. Exactly. That's why with that other guy saying that only the state should give out the bullets... That, that I didn't like because I don't trust um, – not like I don't trust the government, man. Just the way that it's set up right now, um, it's just – I don't know. It's just – it's not a good – it's not a good thing if only the people who are in control have the weapons. Uh, 
yeah, I, I just don't think that, you know, we already see what it's like if, if only the people in control own basically all the major news sources. You see what it's done to this fucking country if you're fucking paying attention. Um, how few things you can talk about, which is why everybody is sitting around talking and calling everybody heroes and this and that and fucking this person's brave and this person's a bad person and blah, 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 blah. It's like well, they've, they've turned us all into like we all went back to school like we're sitting on a fucking playground and we have major goddamn problems that nobody's talking about. You know, um, I'm off my high horse. Okay. Uh, stereotypically, I'm going to say, blah, 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 blah. okay, seems far fetched, but look up deaths from government tyranny in the last century. Semi automatic rifles like the Armalite 15, I guess that's the AR 15, aka the AR 15, yep, are the minimum needed firepower for a guerrilla militia to fight organized militaries. AR 15 is not a military grade weapon or assault rifle by official standards. The main reason being effective firing range. Uh, pistols are almost as effective at close range. So a ban on ARs won't do much, if anything, for most of these horrible events and will eliminate purpose of Second Amendment. Well, I mean, well, now wait a minute, dude. Wait a minute. The, how much, how fast you can shoot and how many people you can fucking hit. I mean, if you walk into a crowded area, how good a shot do you have to be? Um, I just wish one of these gun people would just be like, listen, I don't want him to ban an AR-15 because I'm not fucking crazy and I enjoy shooting the fucking woods up with this thing. It's fun. Um, I just, there has to be a, a, a way. It just can't be that fucking easy for a fucking lunatic to get their hands on. Because the bottom line is, there's nothing wrong with guns as long as you're not a fucking lunatic. But the problem is, is it's obviously too easy as a lunatic to get one. Does that make sense? To gun people and non-gun people? I mean, guns are fucking great. Like, I can guarantee, I have a baseball bat under my bed, and I can guarantee fucking to you, if anybody came in my house, what's the one fucking thing I would wish that I had? I wish I had a fucking gun. You know, my, my, my wife doesn't like them. She's afraid of them, which I get. Now we got a kid, so I'm not, you know, I'm not going to fucking do that. Um, you know, I, you know, and I also don't think, you know, if you get, you know, turn, everybody turn in their fucking guns. The only people who can do that are honest people. What are bad people going to be like, well, I guess we got to turn in our fucking guns. Um, I just, there has to be some sort of, uh, I don't know. How the fuck do you figure out who's fucking nuts or not? That's the problem. Anyway, subsequent, subsequently, almost all gun deaths are from pistols. Solution, increase, increase the age of legal purchase to 21 for anything except pump-action shotguns and black-powdered rifles. Uh, pistols, you already have to be 21. Okay, also, armed security at school, not a cure uh, all, but better than nothing. Yeah, why don't they have armed people at schools, you know? I wouldn't have a problem with that. By the way, Founding Fathers had a concept of machine guns and certainly of semi-automatic they weren't using microaggressions, you Cali lib. Uh, what do you mean they had a concept? I have a concept of a flying fucking car. Do I know what that's going to do to the world? Um, I hope all that clarifies a point of view without being too in-depth. Thanks for, question your, for questioning your stance on the issue. Um... What was their, what was their concept, and how do you know they had a concept... Did new evidence show that they had this? What did they have beyond what that that first one they came up with, where it had to be like pushed by nine people and then you had your little crank? You know? Then the guy who came up with the machine gun, he wanted to do that to lower deaths. I heard I, there's some other bullshit I heard. Like he was just like, well, this thing can shoot as much as an entire platoon. So you won't have to have a platoon, then you can have less people in the army because this person's going to be shooting just as much. And then all the sickos at the top were like, then we will have a platoon of platoons with all machine guns. And it just keeps... That's, that's war. That's a completely different fucking thing. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb, and I don't think the Founding Fathers had a concept of what the fuck, of, of the, the level of population. I mean, there's just so much was fucking different back then. That they had the concept of an AR-15 and a fucking food court in the 1700s. I, you know, 
Maybe they did. I mean, they were they were pretty, you know, I don't know, flying kites with keys on them. I guess that makes you a smart guy. I don't know. All right. Um, all right, gun. Yeah, but I like this because nobody's telling me to go fuck myself or anything like that. You notice people, when you just sort of ask what you're thinking, people will then act civilized. And as opposed to all you idiots on fucking, I shouldn't say it, as opposed to all of you individuals who all have a right to your opinion, the way you guys address each other on social media is, you know, I don't know. It's just the quickest way to have a vein popping out of your forehead. All right, gun ESPN, Billy Musket mug. <laughs> I don't know what that means. It's funny. You're right about the media turning the shootings into ESPN for killers. They, the number they keep throwing around is 18 this year. They're counting suicides, a time where a gun went off in a car, Another was a kid who pulled a police officer's trigger in class. Here's an article about it. Uh, no, I was saying that in the mass shootings, the way the way they say, like, this is the deadliest, this is the third deadliest, this is the most blah, 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 blah. And then they splatter the person's face all over the fucking news. And I, I just don't think that they should show the person. They should die anonymously. Uh, and that's it. I, w- I would even, like, not even cover the fucking story. I mean, the people that need to know, know. People that lost people or had people affected by it, okay? And I don't know. To go beyond that, then what am I sitting there watching it for? So I can watch people cry and see people with the worst day of their fucking life? Why do I need to know that, that that happened? Okay? Law enforcement is going to get the person. They're going to fucking prosecute them and all of that type of shit. Why do I need to know that that is going on? I can't defend myself against it. I'm not going to go do it. Right? However, if you're some sicko and you're watching that shit, you know, I think sickos watch those stories the way, you know, I used to watch rock bands and it made me want to play drums. Um, All right. Non-Americans view on guns. Uh, I'm of the opinion that the occasional mass killing in the U.S. is the price you pay for your government not turning into into Hitler's Germany or Stalin's Russia. It might be the only thing keeping your government from going full retard. My country, New Zealand, New Zealand might be protected in turn by the st- stability of the USA. Uh, I, I, I'm, that guy must be way smarter than I am. I don't know what the fuck any of that means. I'm in the opinion that the occasional mass killings is the U- USA... In the USA is the price you pay for your government not turning into Hitler's Germany or Stalin's Russia. So because we're, we're f- allowed to be freer than them, the price we pay is that. Is that what you're saying? And it might be the only thing keeping your government from going full retard. Uh, which if you look at the economics of the war that we're fighting, it has. Because I don't know how we keep doing this. Or why we're throwing this much money at, you know, I don't know. You know why the fuck we're doing it. Everybody does. All right, lifting weights. Hey, Bill, I'm a longtime fan of the podcast. Just wanted to respond to your comment about not lifting weights. While it's a great that you recognize the negatives to lifting weights as a primary routine, I would not count out curling a few dumbbells every now and then. It's been a lot of research about the cardiovascular benefits to basic weightlifting. I suggest low weight, high reps at least once a week. Thank you. I 100% agree with that. All right, but the problem is, is I came up in the 80s. So it's all about, dude, what are you benching? And how I got hurt was uh, one time in my life, I was able to put up 225, which is 245s on both sides. I finally felt like a big boy in the gym. So like an asshole, whenever I first hurt myself, which I think I was uh, 48, you know, I heard a year ago this past October. So that would be 20, in October 2016. I had a fucking gym put in. I was all excited. And I fucking, the first day, fucked up my shoulder, and I'd never done it before, so I just tried to push through it, and I kept lifting. And now it's just completely, uh, it's completely fucked up. And every time I think I'm getting towards the end of it, like I have, you know, I I now have the strength back where I can, like, you know, pick up shit and everything, but my mobility is really fucked up. So uh, I haven't been to the physical therapy in a minute i gotta get back to that i just got a little busy here but um i agree with that 100 percent. use it or lose it but you know don't try to fucking lift what you lifted when you were 20 all right my wife is nuts 
Um, hey, guys, keep uh, sending shit in about the gun control stuff because I think it's it's really interesting as far as, like, uh, you know, to just hear people's opinions and where they're from and why they view stuff the way they do without fucking screaming at each other. And hopefully, you know, I don't know. I, I just... Can somebody weigh in how... Okay, whether you're pro-gun or not pro-gun. All right? How, uh, you know, because psychos do a lot of shit. Psychos get in cars and they drive into fucking people and all of that shit. You know what I mean? They don't try to fucking make cars away from everybody. I know that's overly simplifying it. But, um, you know, I think it's, I don't know. I just don't, I, even though I'm not into guns, I just don't look at them like they're these, these fucking, like they're alive and they have the devil in them. Um, I do find them scary. You know, I have gone to gun ranges and I shoot and it's fun. Once you kind of, it's like anything. First started flying a helicopter. I was like, is this thing going to chop my fucking head off? And then once you get into the physics and how the whole thing works, it becomes absolutely fascinating. So, uh, you know, I think those people go skeet shooting. I think that's the shit. And I think people that hunt is, it's fucking amazing that they know how to do that build a fire and survive outside. It's probably an important thing that you need to know how to do. I respect all of that shit. It's just uh, how to so and those people should be allowed to continue doing that. I just wish there was a fucking way that you could figure out when somebody came up to be like, hey, maybe that's that's something good for Alexa. Is everybody bugs their house, right? Maybe one of those fucking lunatics will be muttering to themselves. You know, God knows I have a little camera in there and I'll see the person fucking bringing all this fucking ammo. Um, I don't know. Even that, just even if you, you limited the amount of ammunition, the amount of fucking damage that you can do. Just buy, I would think just buying a box of bullets. It's fucking nuts. I didn't like talking about it. It's so fucking creepy. All right. Life is nuts, but I appreciate everybody calmly discussing this. And I respect all of your opinions. All right. Wife is nuts. Bill, longtime listener of the podcast. Dude, can you shed a light on why my wife is unable to have a real conversation about anything tangible? Politics, current events, music, sports, etc. cetera. Uh, I swear she has no interest outside of her work and trashy TV. Team mom, TLC shows, etc. It's kind of sad. She used to be so interesting, but now that she's a mom, she's a bore. Well, she's tired, man. Life is just not fun to her. I love being a father, but I just sense she can't handle the life side of her life. What gives? She's a fantastic mother to her son, but is mailing it in as a wife. Um. All right, I'm not going to lie to you. I've run into these kinds of problems, all right? Um. You know, shit changes, obviously, when you have a kid. But with a woman, they, like, I don't even know what the fuck's going on. They have, like, thunder and lightning going on in between their fucking ears, like all hormones and all this crap. And they get a C-section. They got to recover from major abdominal surgery. They're going through a lot of stuff. Plus, you know, their body literally changes. They put on weight and shit. And it's, like, so easy to fall into a depression, get overwhelmed, and all of that type of shit. So I would say... um, you know, you're doing the guy thing where you're just bare bones talking about it, going, she unable to have a real conversation about anything tangible. I can tell you why my wife watches trashy TV. She sometimes just doesn't want to think, okay? And, you know, the level of worry that they have, you know, about what's going to happen to the kid, am I doing a good job, and all that type of shit. What you need to do, you need to have a date night. Once a week, once every two weeks, get a sitter and go out and kind of get that going again all right and uh i think your wife will enjoy it you guys will enjoy each other's company you got to have you know most of your life is going to be about the kid but you got to have that one little thing right that's what i would do and all the shit that you said to me i would not say to her (laughs) so um anyways that is the uh that is a park oh did anybody see when the uh the bruins played the calgary flames at home and they had the reunion of the uh, 1977-78 Boston Bruins that set a record, even though they lost back-to-back years to the Canadians of the finals. Fucking heartbreaking losses, but um, 
that team had like the most 20 or more goal scorers on it and all of these guys I hadn't seen in like right when I started watching hockey uh, these guys were the Bruins it was Wayne Cashman Terry O'Reilly Stan Jonathan uh, Peter McNabb uh that but Jean Mattel or Jean Mattel, he was gone by the time I, I started watching. John Wensink was gone. But we're just talking about the 20 goal scorers here. Rick Middleton, he was one of my favorites. Um They did this great thing where they had uh they just brought him back and they were showing all the highlights and they had Don Cherry come out. He was the coach at the time. And um uh, it was so fucking great to see those guys. And he did all these interviews and laugh, and they're all fucking yeah, hockey plays of the shit. It was just, for the most part, just humble and that type of thing. And they were laughing like Stan Jonathan. Hey, you were known as a tough customer. It's like one of the toughest fucking guys that ever played. And he's like, hey, you know, I had a couple of scraps or whatever. Just, you know, whatever. Doesn't need to prove anything. And um, I actually only watched the first period, and we played horrible defense in that game. I hope we fucking ended up winning that but uh i'm trying to hang in there with the bruins and the celtics i know i haven't been talking about them much this year but uh my kid became mobile so i spend most of my life running around after her and uh when she goes to sleep i sleep you know what i mean it's like that ludicrous song right when you move when i move you move well, that's the other way when, when she sleeps you sleep just like that when you sleep whatever the fucking song is that's what i always sing when i put it down well, you sleep, I sleep, just like that. And she goes, he, he, he. And she fucking laughs and falls asleep. And then I shut my eyes, which feels like five seconds. Then I have to wake back up again. Which is probably why I fell asleep during the phenomenal Black Panther. Go out, check it out. Uh, really enjoyed that movie, even though I fell asleep and thought I was in a helicopter crash. <laughs> All right, that's it. And my apology to figure skaters. You know what I mean? Why do you have to be skating around all fucking emaciated? You know what I'm saying? I think it's about time they got some thickies out there. All right? God knows maybe they can do some new tricks. Okay, that's it. That's the podcast. Uh, I'm off to New York. And um, I'm going to do that benefit. Looking forward to seeing uh, Bobby Kelly, Rich Voss, Joe DeRosa, all the people out there. Uh, shout out to Colin Quinn. I know he's doing better and all that stuff. Um uh, He's been to just about every um, Patrice O'Neill benefit, uh, salt of the earth guy. So uh, giving him a shout out. So hopefully he'll be up and around. I can run into him in New York and try and break his balls. All right. That's the podcast. Go fuck yourselves. I'll check in, to, check in with you on Thursday. Jesus. <laughs>